Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a fresh episode of the Energy of Houses and Properties. It's the first one of 2023. And uh, I wish you all the best for the coming New Year's. And let me check if uh, Aisha is already online so I can invite her. And if you have any questions for us for this episode, put them in the comments so we can see it and uh, yeah, respond to it. Um, maybe the new year brought some uh, resolutions for you or goals or something you'd like to share. Um, yeah, let us know. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, Aisha will check in soon. I can't see her at the moment. Um, let me know how you are. And um, yeah, what's bringing 2023 for you? Did you say goodbye to 22? And in what way did you celebrate that? Maybe you'd like to say something about that. For me personally, uh, I had a really quiet. Um, New Year's Eve, um, I just slept a bit on the sofa to be honest. And the 1st uh, uh, of January I started with a sport event and uh, I uh, swam my personal record in a swimming pool. So that was really nice to do. And I see Aisha is checking in so I'm inviting her. And see how she is. If you have any questions, please let us know so we can respond to. Um, we can respond to it in, the, in the, our live. There she is. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> made it. <laughs> yeah, you made it. I got a little bit worried there, but. Uh, you're here. So good to see you. Yeah. It's been a while. Yes, I was just uh, telling everyone it's the first episode of 23 already. Yes. And yes. I was asking if anybody wants to share something about their saying goodbye of 22 or maybe they have some resolutions or questions about the energies of 23. So far, nothing came up, but maybe you'd like to share a bit of your New Year's Eve. Uh, yeah, well, it was, it's was. it been on and off illness in our family. <laughs> Mostly my son, actually. It's been very long drawn out. He's actually sleeping in the, in the other room. Um, but, but he, it, so we did, but have some like moments of sparkles and magic <laughs> sprinkled in between. Uh, and we did get manage to have a nice new year. Uh, my son was with our um, with his grandparents and his uncle, and my husband and I we went out for dinner, and we we stayed at our hotel, which is our tiny house. <laughs> I cleaned it up. You know, we 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 wanted to go to uh, visit some ancient sites in in Turkey. And um, since my son was on and off sick, we couldn't make any plans. We didn't know when he was going to recover. <laughs> and then I just, it, I had a moment of, you know what? It's time to give even more love to our tinies and our house construction because it was, it's been quite a mess actually. Um, ever since the, uh, some of the workers who stayed with us left and all that. So, we did a good cleanup of one of them, and we turned it into our hotel. <laughs> and uh, we lit a fire, and the fire uh, felt really good to have. It was really important. We were almost too tired to light the fire uh, after dinner, and but we did it, and it, it really helped us to transition into the next year. Uh, we... I did some a few a few quiet whispering prayers uh, at the tree. We we have a an olive tree that we planted, um, 
and I made an offering to the nature spirits, actually some clementines with some candles. It was very much in the moment, on the spot kind of thing. Nothing planned. Nothing planned. And I feel that that, as I, as I speak about that, Nikki, the nothing plannedness of things, I feel is very important for, um, for 2023. The nothing well said. Plan. <laughs> well said. Go with the flow, basically. Yeah. Go with the flow. Yeah, it's it's time that we uh, listen better to what is needed and follow that. Yeah, um, and to just to continue with the Clementine offering that I made, it was on my brass tray. Put a candle in the middle and made an offering to the nature spirits as a thank you, really, as a thank you for all they've done to, to, to and, and all that they've accommodated when it comes to the construction of our, of our house and, and the tinies. Um, but just something funny, in, the, uh, in one of our other tiny houses, we've got a young couple who, who, who just got married and they rented it for for like a four months or so and coming close to the end of the contract anyway she she and her friends were out on the deck and i came walking past and she said what are those tangerines on the tray we've been researching them we've been researching what their meaning is you know, looking up all the meaning behind, like, what the Clementine means and, you know, how she's laid it out on the tray. And we've been racking our brains. This is, of course, all in Turkish, okay? We've been racking our brains trying to figure out what the meaning is. And I just said, I just said, go within and you find your own meaning. And we had a really good laugh about it because I said, there's no meaning. <laughs> <laughs> I said, in the moment, that's what I had. I gave, gave the Clementines and the tray my love, and they all laughed so much. I said, there's no... I think that that's really so much the theme of 2023. Fun. <clears throat> Don't overanalyze things. That's, that's what I'm... That's it. Don't force, that's it. Don't force things. Um, and always listen to the great spirit within without needing to um, hang on to other people's uh, opinions or charts or this or that, even though I still, you know, do my research and stuff. But, but, yeah. but still, it's really interesting that those people picked up, they picked up on the energy and the intention. Yeah. So there was a you could say there is no meaning, maybe not in the exact placement or how it was laid yeah. out, but there was definitely an intention and an energy there that they picked up on somehow. Yeah, yeah, and and I and I and I we had a good laugh about it, and it means also that they've got the eyes and the ears and the heart to sense that there was a there was something there. Yeah, I had offered for them to use the fire pit as well. And so they were in this kind of more central courtyard area that we're, we're creating. And then they noticed it when they were, when they lit the fire as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, themes of 2023, play, um, relinquish the planning, be more in the moment, more in the moment, more in the moment. Yeah. What about for you, Nikki? I had a really quiet uh, uh, New Year's Eve. Um, I tried to watch, you know, one of those New Year's Eve shows that you have in the Netherlands, but I just fell asleep. And it was yeah. 10 past 12, and I said, hey, guys, I really need to sleep. Cause <laughs> so my daughter and, and my husband went outside and said hello to the neighbors, and uh, we have uh, still some fireworks. People are allowed to... Uh, uh, put fireworks yeah. themselves 
And um, the next day, the January 1st, there was a swim event going on. So I swam my personal record uh, in a swimming pool. So I started the year off really uh, supportive. And my New Year's uh, uh, dip, uh, that you, that's a tradition in the Netherlands. On the 1st of January, you go to the ocean and you take a dip. I did that uh, in my home waters here on the 2nd of January with a couple of uh, couple of people and uh, yeah and I started the year of good and um, yeah we'll see what happens I've set some goals and uh, I'm going to do some more courses and yeah we'll see what comes from all of that and um, yeah I was thinking on on the way back uh, this morning <clears throat> really I can I keep coming back to the, the cold is such a great learner uh, teacher uh, yeah. about being in the moment and about listening to your inner guide uh, what your body needs but also what your energy needs, what your uh, mental and spiritual needs are and uh, yeah just just try it um, besides all the health benefits it's also yeah. really good to uh, expand your awareness of everything that is around you yeah yeah amazing nikki well i have to say that <clears throat> since i've been doing the cold showers and again i can't emphasize more nikki has converted me and she's really um inspired <laughs> me uh to to do the cold exposure um, I, I have to say, though, my intuition told me to stop during when I was quite ill and I had mm -hmm. uh, fever and all of that. Um, so I didn't want to, you know, go, 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 go during certain times. So I was listening to what felt good for me. Um, <coughs> so I'm, I'm waiting until maybe a couple more days to start the cold again. But um, I have healed much faster much faster. I'm also doing Kangen water. I got a Kangen water machine as well. Um, and I think that's also really helping me with the alkaline water drinking. Um, yeah. But water, it's all the theme of water, cold water, drinking healthy water. Um, normally, I would be down for like 10 days or something like that. Um, I've just been down for longer because I'm a mom and I've been taking care of my son. But really, my illness lasted like maybe three days, two days, not even. I still have a bit of a cough, but um, before it would have taken a lot longer. And I do feel that the cold exposure has helped me um, keep my immune system strong and allow me the capacity to repair faster. Yeah, and so. you did really good by listening to your body just you know, the physical part of it, so to not go and, and get into the cold, yeah. just you need some time to, you know, get warm again. And that's perfectly yeah. fine. And, and what I'm discovering now is the energy part of it, the energetic side of it. So that's really, right. uh, it's an interesting journey and I will probably continue going on. Um, especially I look forward to spring already so we can really go swim outside so you can really connect with uh, the elements outdoors which is a different um, uh, adventure again yeah so yeah go with the flow I think that is really um, 23 another theme that comes up for me yeah go with the flow theme for 23 um, when I was tuning into, um, you know, the, the themes of 2023, it was, I was watching one of my, um, somebody that I enjoyed watching. Her name is Danielle Rama Hoffman. She's also like me, someone who has, um, um, and who still does in some way, but in a, in a more, in a different way. Um, she's an alchemical energy healer. Uh, but she's a coach. She's like a, a million dollar coach right now. Anyway, I watch her videos on YouTube. I recommend them. Um, and she's a channel, actually. She's a channel as well. 
Um, she also talks about bringing um, for the, the themes of uh, 2023 of descending actually into form and bringing things into form. Um, we're talking about this ascension all the time. We're, and we are, we are going through this process of ascension. Uh, but, but, but now is t uh, there's an opportunity she talks about where the physical, um, mm, where physical world, physical matter has dislodged itself a bit from its density. And so it's kind of hovering a bit. I, 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 a while back, uh, I remember, uh, if you remember, we may have talked about this in the summertime, I had that intuition where I could see that the pattern of things, of physical things were being lifted and that they're kind of hovering and there's an opportunity to mold and shape them anew. And so if any of you out there are wanting to reshape your home, whether it be moving the furniture, um, building a new garden, creating a new garden, um, building a sculpture, um, building a new house, building a community. What you have may felt um, a couple years ago or five years ago, very daunting. Daunting meaning like, Oh my God, this is the, this is such an overwhelmingly huge project. I don't know where I'm going to begin. The physical, mm, because the physical matter has somewhat dislodged itself from its uh, very permanent caked in <laughs> structure, it's allowing us to play with it more, and you'll see that you will be able to manifest those projects in form a lot more easily with more fluidity. And so, um, you know, when I was meditating before I even heard her say that, it was all about really creating things in form, making things in form, for me at least. Um, but that could also relate to, you know, really taking care of your body in form, changing your body. That could also be something, right? Because it's about the form. Um, but, you know, it's so, for me, ever more important to make things, create things, uh, on this planet. Um, and, um, and build beauty and build beauty. So, yeah. It also <laughs> means that if, uh, matter is, uh, the energy of matter is a bit more loose, it is much easier to reprogram it. So if we come back right. to your offering, you know, if, if before you had maybe, um, uh, a bit um, difficulties with putting an intention across uh, uh, an object it would now be much easier because right. um, matter is um, able now to accept our energy more easy and I've started with a, uh, a book and that is exactly about this it's about the life of things and it's from a Dutch writer, so and it hasn't been translated. I just checked this morning for you, so it's really. <laughs> so, but <clears throat> it's it's uh, um, uh, described as a, a new form of materi materialism. There are so many objects around us, and we are so intertwined with with objects. Um, we hardly realize it, how important they are. And as an example, he gives um, uh, Pompeii, which is an ex uh, extraordinary example of a city frozen in time. And compared to that, now you have in the Netherlands a couple of 
a museum where you can go back into the 70s or into the 50s and right. how these kind of uh, documents is really difficult to preserve so but if you have I don't know some kind of brand of uh, laundry um, soap but yeah. it doesn't exist if you just see that it brings you back in time that you cannot discover anywhere else because these objects they don't exist anymore so it's it's really about the relationship again go back to the relationship with objects and why not see these objects uh, as something with an awareness which we do with when we're working with energies you cannot go any other way when as soon as you talk about relationship there has to be some kind of consciousness otherwise you cannot feel the clementines talking to you <laughs> right there isn't that exchange right a relationship does require a, a breathing in and out uh, from one to the other and back again there's this there's this energy flow an energy exchange and so how do you have right an energy exchange with something that is dead and, and, and I'm not talking about the dead spirit because a dead spirit is actually has a, has a consciousness but I'm just talking about something that is completely <clears throat> the other pole of inanimate dead yeah and it's yeah. really interesting because this is really from from um, a scientific point of view it's not an esoteric book at all so it's okay. really it's really interesting because it talks about you know um archaeology philosophy uh culture and history and all these examples um but i just started in it so i can't tell you everything yet <laughs> Yeah, that's that's no, yeah. it's really beautiful, so important. I mean, absolutely, the objects around us, the furniture, your bed, you know, everything has a consciousness. Um, you know, to what degree is, of course, arguable. You know, there's certain <laughs> hierarchies there, but <clears throat> yeah, um, I mean, just comparing something that's man-made, right, that's carved like a wooden spoon that is carved with a hand and perhaps even by someone who is singing a song while carving it <laughs> compared to uh, something that's generated from the assembly line, from a robot, Sure, could you bring, could you infuse that object with life? Maybe, maybe, you know, I, I, I have to, I haven't really made the experiment, but um, there is a difference in quality. There is a difference between the energy exchange. Um, and I'm just thinking about what if you even, what if it wasn't two spoons, one that's, done by the, uh, made by the uh, <coughs> robot, let's say, and one done by or made by the, uh, the human being singing a song. Um, what if those two spoons turned into two houses? Now, that's a really interesting topic for, for these days, uh, for our times, um, because, you know, on one hand, we, a lot of us long for the old crafted buildings, right? That are all handcrafted. And to a certain degree, that's not very realistic anymore due to, you know, labor resources, like labor costs, you know, um, skill, skill. <laughs> There's very few skilled craftspeople, right? And then, if, but if we were to have a, a house that was purely generated by the assembly line, and there are houses that are 3D printed now, um, you know, constructed by robots, <coughs> this is, you know, totally possible. Um, 
there's a certain quality that's missing, the hu human element that gets, there's a risk of missing that. And then you end up um, losing that flow, that connection energy exchange that we we're talking about. <laughs> but am I a fan of some of the amazing robots that are squirting out clay <laughs> and building 3D printed clay buildings? Yes. Am I, do I see that these robots can help uh, build um, houses for the poor? You know, uh, houses in Africa, houses in, you know, <coughs> some of the poorest countries in the world? Yes. Do I think they're cool? Yes, because you can actually build some pretty amazing organic architecture with it. Um, but um, going back to the object topic, Nikki, uh, I do feel that there is a risk. If we go too much to the digital, this is actually very much the analog and digital conversation here. Uh, which is a deep topic, but um, if we go too much to the digital, then then we lose the human the human aspect, which I feel gives us that capacity to form the relationship with the object. It's something worth trying, testing out. It's it's really interesting. You have to also keep in mind that different materials are accepting energies quicker than others it's more difficult to put an intention into metal than into wood or ceramics or clay so if you're right. talking about these uh, amazing uh, 3d mud printers when i saw that the first time i was really amazed like hey, wow you have to take into consideration the intention of the architect because that is really important for the input for the programming of the printer. And then again, you have this mud building and there you can do a lot with house healing and tension because it's clay, it's, it's natural stuff. So it's, it doesn't have to be a problem because we, I do the same things with, with bricks and, and, and concrete. Uh, and <coughs> if it's mud, it's, it's easier, I would say. It would be easier. Yeah, but it it, it yeah, needs attention, and that's that's uh, why you, you do what you do, and I do what I do, uh, and I think it's a, it's important. And uh, I see Fenneke has a comment. I haven't read it yet. Um, our daughter is a product designer, and she designs from creating long term relationship with her stuff. If something, <laughs> you just can't get rid of it because you're in love with it. Huh. Good question. Or a good comment. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, there are some people who just love to fix things. Uh, and they keep buying broken stuff just because they like to fix things. Uh, which could also be a sign of something they symbolically want to fix in themselves um, that's that's an aspect uh, yeah and uh, yeah I think I I think a lot of products are now designed to be broken after a certain amount of time while before you just went into the store and you bought a screw and then it was was fixed again and that's uh, all has to do with uh, uh, money making uh, systems and I think slowly but surely the world is realizing that's maybe not the way to go with all the plastic pollution I've, I've read a lot of plastic pollutions in the last week uh, which is uh, something to really get nightmares about <laughs> if you're into it like that you invest it too yeah yeah so yeah I can only hope that uh not just, you know, us civilians on a personal level are more aware of it, but also that the big companies uh, make a switch there. 
Because, uh, yeah, you, it, sometimes it feels really hopeless. But hey. Yeah. And matter is dislodging itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <coughs> we, we have the capacity to shift and change the way we, we build things, we make things, everything from the small object to, to the larger building or city. Yeah. Um, there was this book, and I lent it to someone years ago. This is related to um, uh, Fenneke's um, comment here. Um, and it was such, it's such a beautiful book. Objects not to be destroyed or something like that. I think it was something called like that. I have to find it again. Such a beautiful catalog of um, objects in Russia of, that people fix. Everything down to the razor for shaving, a man's razor for shaving, to like lamps, to, you know, lawnmowers, to whatever because of, uh, you know, a certain amount of people in Russia at a certain time and still <clears throat> um, could not get access to purchasing, you know, abundant material, like, you know, comparing to Canada or America, where it's like, oh, my God, the amount of consumption there is insane. It's insane. <laughs> the grocery stores there, it's insane how big they are. It's insane how much air conditioning they use. It's insane how much heating they use. It's insane how much hot water they use. It's disgusting. <clears throat> and comp so comparatively, looking at these objects that are fixed with such ingenuity, it's brilliant. I wonder even if your daughter knows about this project, uh, oh, sorry, this book. Um, I think it's called Objects Not to be Destroyed or something like that. And the spirit that emanates from those objects as a result of the care and the ingenuity and the inventor mind that is required to, to fix that pulley and then make it work and then just, and then how is that rope going to make the balancing of that object. I mean, I'm really not an engineer mind at all. And it was just fascinating, fascinating to me to, to look at it. Um, but they each looked like uh, individual contemporary art pieces, the way they were photographed as well. Um, and, uh, you know, it just makes me think of my mother, you know, she you know, at a certain period of her t childhood, when she was very little, growing up in, in Turkey, there was no toilet paper, right? Um, and of course, in the Turkish culture is quite, quite clean. Um, <coughs> historically, Ar Arabs are also very clean as well. <coughs> Muslims are very clean due to our consistent use of cleansing and water. And so, the bidet is used, and also more in the in Europe as well, I believe. But the bidet is used well to clean your butt, right? <laughs> um, so water is used a lot, and we have the Alaturka bathrooms where it's just a hole in the floor as well. I mean, I you know we don't have them so much anymore, but they're much healthier actually with the squatting and the flowing water. Uh, anyway. So she would remind me of that, and, um, you know, I'm just amazed at how she's repaired some of my clothes, you know, made pillows out of, uh, you know, extra, extra scraps of fabric, and turned, some, turned nothing into something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Benek is also saying that her daughter designs everyday products with the intention that you want it, you want to build a relationship with it. And I'd like to add to that, you have with everything in your house, you have a relationship, whether you realize it or not, with every single thing. Yeah, yeah, even if it's built by a robot. Yeah. Yeah. 
as when yeah. you brought it in your house it is in a relationship with you whether you want it or not so the more yeah. aware you become of all these uh, little energetic threads that go to each and every object in your house it can be really overwhelming and that's where my <laughs> condo comes in <laughs> So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I I, I commend your daughter. Um, you know that she has that consciousness uh, to 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 make to create things that don't become this throwaway thing. Uh, that there's a consciousness there uh, for the quality. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then the threads, Nikki, as, as you're saying, uh, we're absolutely connected. Yeah. 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 And that there are periods in our life, you know, I'm thinking about our life in transition with our house construction and we're in this temporary place. And to be honest, like half of the time I feel like I'm living in chaos. And you know what? I decided to embrace the chaos. <laughs> <coughs> yeah and, um, and, and you are because you are living in two places at the same time it's really uh, difficult I can imagine you know my husband he had he had to go this morning to the tiny house to get my ring light for this time for this Instagram live thing and then he calls me up he's like where's the effing cord you know like the 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 plug for it, you know, yeah. the plug is somewhere else, and then the thing that attaches. I'm like, I think it was in that bag over there, you know. Like it's like the consistent. <laughs> yeah. Like my my son comes in and he's like taking my pens and it's like I don't even have an office. Like I swear, it's I have to write some memoirs about it because I'm gonna be laugh even more after I know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, all I can say is I very much value walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is no freedom I, without boundaries. Eh? You know that. None of this open concept bullshit. <laughs> okay. Don't listen to the architect to tell you that they want that everything should be open. <laughs> <coughs> Don't listen to them. <laughs> I miss walls. I miss doors. And doors, because the doors that we have, uh, the top, they're called half-lit. They have glass on the top of them. So each time a light is turned on in the hallway, the light comes into the... So I miss solid doors. I also miss locks, like really good locks. <laughs> I, I I think I made my point very clearly as as a as a mom kind of like ah, going crazy. <coughs> yeah, suddenly it might be easier to understand how these uh, nomad people live in teepees and and yurts, you know, in a round with no windows and everything because they are outside all day without any boundaries whatsoever. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you cannot, um, uh, you cannot um, um, not coordinate, you cannot, you don't know where you are if there is no um, boundary somewhere. Yeah, two things come up for me there. And I know there are still people that live that way, but I'm going to first um, <clears throat> refer to the nomadic tribes that lived long ago. I'm going to first start there. What came to me as you were speaking, so this is a total co-creation, Nikki, and I thank you because these thoughts don't come forward unless I'm with you. Um, <clears throat> what came to me there is that they were trained to have their center strong. 
That just came to me. So the center, strong. The center, grounded. The inner world, grounded, but also having a very close relationship with the sky. The nomadic tribes generally, <clears throat> right, they're looking at the stars. They're waiting for when the right time is to move. So there's that. Center, strong. But also, they, if we're referring to the nomadic tribes long ago, they weren't going through the process of individuation that we are going mm -hmm. through right now. And so the group soul was much needed. Mm -hmm. And they, they lived for being in group. I, I, um, I, I exist because others exist or because others are. I am because others are. I think that's an African pro proverb or something. I may be botching it up, mm -hmm. but instead of I think, therefore I am or whatever, but it was more about the group soul. Um, but now we're going through such a process of individuation to the point where my husband and I talk about how actually we're really grateful that we have those tiny houses on our property because then we, one of us can run away to one of them if we want to be, and so that we can be our individual selves, <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, it's a, it's a fact. It's a fact. We need that the, 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 the space for our own growth. We need our own room. We need our own room for the extra creative stuff. <coughs> um, you know, their connection with nature, the cycles, um, and I'm sure that there's some natural boundaries and borders that were found by being in different landscapes mm -hmm. uh, in the forest, right? Doing your, uh, your, your alone walks in the woods, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I want to what recommend. I want to recommend a book about this, and it is. It it looks like a totally unrelated topic, but it isn't. Uh, it's called Through the Language Glass, and I'm looking right at it right now, and it's yeah. talking about how uh, language is cultural and what the differences are. And one of the examples that amazed me most is what you just referred to. Uh, I think he spoke about. Um, the native people of Australia, they are so trained, they know all the time where is north, east, south, west, every moment in time. And there was an example, um, imagine yourself uh, a hallway in a hotel and every hotel room looks the same. You open a door on the left and you see the bed and it's on the right with this nightstand and you look uh, on the other side of the room and it looks exactly the same for us. But for those people who are native Australian outdoorsy people, it is totally different because, and they see it in one eye flash and we are both right. But they, their point of view is, okay, this bed is now, pointing to the north and in the other room it's pointing to the east or the south it's totally different but in our perspective because our center is different they're like, oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly the same room but for them it's totally different and he describes uh, uh, about an interview that even uh, it is a story about somebody I think fell off a boat and this interview was taken with this person for example looking to the north and they filmed this interview and he told the story and made all the uh, hand gestures like it happened in the directions of the wind on this boat and a couple of years later they did at the interview and he told the same story only he was pointing with his nose to another direction so all his movements also changed because he was sitting in a different direction he was telling how it was happening in the north east south west exact coordination which is fascinating to me because that is a cultural thing you cannot 
learn that right away. Uh, only if you brought up like that, and yeah, you have you ha yeah, it is really amazing. So it's called through the language class. And if you are so a geomancer cool. or you do energetic work, it's it's a must be because it connects cultural language and geomancy. It's not mentioned as geomancy, but you will see the connections right away. It's really interesting. So beautiful. And this, I'm just thinking about how important the storytelling of those of those children growing up being surrounded by and being but listening to the, their elders tell stories also about the elements tell stories about um and i'm not suggesting that i know exactly how that information was taught or relayed but my sense is that one of the ways is by <clears throat> helping the children to establish a loving relationship, a relationship of reverence with the being behind the North, the being behind the East, rather, rather than what we were in Western culture, grew up with, oh, well, though, these are the coordinates, North, you know, it's very dry, it's very scientific, right? For the for the three year old child, that's not that's not that's not reality. And in fact, the three year old child really does hold much more wisdom than we think she or he does. Um, so yeah, I just I imagine that there's a lot of um, stories of the wind stories of the waters, stories of the fire, stories of the earths, stories of the stars. Um, and I know that there are from my exposure to indigenous culture in Canada. Um, and I think that that is what is required moving forward for us to develop that relationship of reverence again with the, uh, with the elements, with the directions. And when you do, then, then you're like, okay, well, North is here. It's clear. North is speaking to us in relationship to the, the, the positioning of this bed and, you know, and everything else that, yeah. Beautiful. That's I'd love for you to uh, send that, uh, that, the name of that book. Yeah, it's really because it also talks about in uh, um, in linguistic research, um, the first words are often black, white, and red because dark wow. and light. It has to do with 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 survival, you know, when it's day, when it's night, and red is about blood, and that relates to me with everything I know about geomancy. You know, the three-folded goddess. The red, yeah. the white, and the red. Yeah. So all these little pieces, it's not uh, these stories, these mythological mythological stories. They do really relate to our, you know, very scientific research. Yeah. That's beautiful. Wow. So, 2020. Yeah. yeah, any questions or comments before we r r wrap up our talk today? Don't be shy. <laughs> and just go for it if you have a question about your home, yeah. your garden. Who's who's working on a project? Who's who's wanting to um, transform their their home or rearrange it or perhaps you're moving you have a vision to, to create a new space, a new sanctuary if you have any questions about or 
or any questions about even the energy of the space that you're living in now. <clears throat> Something comes up uh, uh, about direction. Uh, Benik is talking about direction. Um, if you have a pretty clear idea of the energy you want to invite into your life, um, focus on that energy and be still and stand up and turn around your own axe and focus on that energy where this energy feels for you the strongest in which direction it will make a difference and if you have found that that direction maybe you could hang up in your living room or in your bedroom or wherever you want to uh, be confronted with that particular kind of energy you could hang up a symbol or an image or uh, maybe a flower or whatever suits that intention the best so that you enforce the incoming stream <laughs> of that particular energy into your house Yeah, it will help you form that relationship, right, with it? Yeah, with the, yeah. The, and so you will recognize it as when you need to make a decision, any kind of decision, uh, you will always choose that first because you are so connected with that energy or with the intentions you've set for yourself. Love it, yeah. There's so many different ways you could do that. You can also do it in outdoor spaces as well. Not only indoor, it could be a rep something um, that's placed in the garden at a certain coordinate or location. Um, oh, you made an altar there. Beautiful. Hey, perfect. 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 I love it. Super. Yeah. What better? What better thing to do? Yeah. Well, I think it's about time to close off for today. Yeah. Well, everyone, <laughs> add, if there are others who are kind of still formulating their questions within, but it's not quite coming out just yet, once it does get formulated and you're ready to ask a question, you can send those questions to us. Uh, send it directly to Nikki, PM her or PM me, um, or add it in the comments below of the uh, the replay uh, that we post uh, of this of this episode, and uh, and we'll read them and we will take them up in our next next talk. So thank you. Good to Thanks, see you again. Have a blast oh, in twenty three. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a slow start for, for me and my family, but lots of resting and staring at ceilings and walls. Staring at ceilings and walls. <laughs> <laughs> like so tired that we couldn't even read, you know? So yeah. yeah, lots of rest, lots of sleeping. Yeah. I hope everyone feels better soon then. And uh... yeah, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> oh, we've got a Dutch question. Oh. Uh, you <coughs> said there are no books. Uh, you shouldn't have books in your meditation area. Um, that's for oh, her not okay. possible. Can I do it better outside? Aisha, you said there should be no books in your meditation place. That's really not possible for me. Can I do it better outside? When did I say that? <clears throat> I don't remember saying that actually. Did I say it in another talk or related to something else? Why don't you send me a personal message? And uh, yeah, so I don't remember saying that. I could, I may have said that books can be a distraction in a creative space. I do find more and more I want less books in my space of creation. <coughs> Aha, okay. 
It can sometimes be distracting. Yeah. Okay. In the blueprint. Okay. In the blueprint course. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I, I wonder if you may have taken it a bit literally. Um, I could, I may have said that uh, it can be a distraction if you have too much information in those, like, because you can feel the information coming from those books. But I wouldn't make that a stress, you know. If that's what you have in your meditation space, it's, you know, there's always distractions everywhere, so don't worry about it. Uh, more important to focus on going within. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, Nikki. Thanks, Aisha. See you next time. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Have a great new year, 2023. Yay. <laughs>